Hello Dynamics class. Today we are going to look at a different technique to do stuff we already can do. But it's a different method and, and some of you will see it again. Uh, and it also might help deepen how you think about uh, the motion, uh, planar motion of solid objects. Okay, suppose I have some object uh, some blob rotating around point C. So point C is fixed in this reference frame. And it's rotating at five radians per second. So that should be five radians per second. And let's see, can we find the velocity of point B fixed around point C? So let me write the velocity of, at, in uh, radial and transverse coordinate system. So the velocity in radial and transverse coordinates. So, if I, uh, so I, I'll write the. Let's think of the velocity of point B as the velocity of point B compared to point C. In which case, since it's a solid object, uh, since B and C are both two points on a solid object, that means the uh, radial component would be zero. So that means the velocity of point B has to be in the theta hat direction. And the direction of the theta hat direction would be this way, okay? And the amount of it would be r, which is 2 times theta dot, which would be 10. So this would be 10 meters per second in that direction for the velocity. Okay, how about for point A? For point A, velocity is going to be, again, 100% in the theta hat direction because A and C are both on a solid object. So the velocity in the r hat direction would be zero. So this would be, for point A, the r would be five and the theta dot would be five. So this is going to be 25 meters per second. Okay, so far nothing new. Now in the method of the instantaneous center of rotation, what we do is we take an object where we don't know the point where it's fixed. In this case it was point C. And we, but what we do know is where we ended this problem. I know the velocities of two points on the object. So for example, Okay, in our example, now I've got two points on an object, on a solid object, and the velocity of point A is five meters per second this way, and the velocity of point B is not known, but it's straight up. And let's see if we can locate the instantaneous center, meaning as if, if this object, if this were a chunk of a solid object that had a point on it that wasn't uh, moving, where would that point be? Where would its center of rotation be? So the center of rotation is definitely going to have to be located such that these velocities at points A and B, which are both in the theta hat direction. So this is the theta hat for point B compared to the center. And this is the theta hat for point A compared to the center. So because those are both in the theta hat direction, that means the actual center, the r hat direction, then has to be this way for both of those points. So these are the r hat directions. So this would be the r hat for that, and this would have to be the r hat for point B. So it means the center has to be located right here. It's the only point that makes uh, that's consistent with both the motion of point A and the motion of point B being perpendicular to the r hat direction. Okay, so this is our center of rotation then it has to be right here. Uh, this angle is 20 degrees, so this angle is 70, so this angle is 70 degrees. So now we can figure out the distance from A to B. Uh, 
Okay, so we got those two distances, and I now know I can use, uh, I can write the velocity of point A in radial and transverse coordinates, which has to equal the actual velocity in the theta hat direction, which is five. So therefore, our omega would be 1.57 radians per second. And now we can do the same thing for point B. 